Hello everyone. In a previous video, I talked about how to uh, create two different processes uh, on a Raspberry Pi in the C programming language and it, it actually in any Linux operating system. I also talked about how to share data between those processes. Well, I'm going in this video, I'm going to introduce a, a, another way of having parallel execution of our program, and that's going to be through the use of a thread. And we're going to make use of the pthread library, and the p stands for POSIX, which is, uh, POSIX is just a, uh, a set of standards, and so it's a standard way of, of implementing a thread uh, in C programming on a Linux operating system. Uh, so let's first of all let's compare uh, some of the uh, similarities and differences between a process and a thread uh, as I said in my previous video a process uh, is when we create a new process we create a copy of the program and it operates in its own memory space uh, a thread uh, operates within the same memory space and uh, so it is possible to share variables between threads directly in our, our program rather than having to create a pipe to share data between the, the, the different uh, operations. Uh, remember, uh, when we created a new process, we also then had to create a pipe so we could share data back and forth between the parent and the child process. Uh, we don't necessarily have to do that in a thread, but we still have to be able to protect uh, variables from being ac accessed by two different threads at the same time, and we'll, we'll, we'll use something called a mutex to do that. <clears throat> but we'll, we'll get into that when we get into the code. Uh, so the main difference is uh, a a process is operates in its own memory space and a thread can share memory space with other threads and I guess the other important thing to note is a process can have multiple threads uh, so we could have uh, two processes like I'm showing here uh, each with with uh, their own threads and have a lot of things going all on all at once uh, so let's go ahead and get into some of the code just to demonstrate okay before we actually uh, demonstrate the thread I want to first kind of show you uh, what happens when you try to do a lot of stuff uh, within a single thread and a single process on the Raspberry Pi uh, now the Raspberry Pi 2 has four cores uh, so we have the potential to do four things at once uh, but what I say it's only the potential to do four things at once because if you have a program like the very simple one I'm showing here uh, that's a single thread and a single process it's only going to use one core and so it doesn't matter if you've got those four cores this program is only going to execute as fast as one core can allow it and I'll demonstrate that we'll just uh, compile it and run it. Actually, I think I already have it up here. Let's uh, close that one first. Uh, compile, build, and uh, actually, before I do that, I'll just so all this is going to do, it's it's a it's a for loop. It's going to iterate through an increment of counter, then it's going to close. So we're not going to see anything on the screen. But watch over here, my if my pro, my indicator here. Right now, you can see I'm using about eh, about two percent, zero to two percent of uh, of the CPU capacity. And I guess you can see it over here as well. Uh, I'm just popping that up, uh, use some capacity, but you can see it's it's hovering around between zero and one or two percent. Uh, so when I go over here and then I hit run uh, and then bring up my process manager, you can see this program is called single thread and it's using 25% of the CPU. Well, that's 25% because we're only using one core. This this process is is operating as fast as one core can allow it uh, but it's not making any use of the other three cores on the on the processor so this is the reason why we want to be able to do the multi-processing or multi-threading on the Raspberry Pi 2 if we have an application where we really need to have uh, use more than one of those cores uh, we need to create a new thread or we need to create a new process okay and so now 
let's go over and hop over to the program I wrote to demonstrate the pthread. Uh, first of all, I'm going to import some, uh, include some libraries. Uh, we have the, the standard uh, I.O. library and the standard library. Uh, this is the one where we get the pthread. Uh, so we get the pthread uh, library there. Uh, we're also going to use the sys types and uh, the uh, uh, uni, uni standard. Uh, and we're going to use that just like we did in the pro, uh, the fork and the pipe video. We're going to use that to get the process ID. And what this program is going to do is we're going to create three threads, uh, but you'll see that they're all in the same process. Okay, uh, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to declare a function here. And this is the function that's called uh, by th that, that we go to in each thread that's created. Uh, so you need to create one. It will be in th just this kind of, you can call it whatever you like, uh, but you're going to use this, uh, use the asterisk here uh, to create this, this function that's passed to the thread. And that's where that thread will execute from, from there. Um, so we're, but we're just going to have one of them uh, for this. Uh, next, we have we're going to create uh, a mutex, and what this mutex does is it, it's it's a uh, uh, think of it as kind of a uh, a flag that can be uh, set and cleared uh, that all of the threads have access to, um, and we use that to control. Uh, the access to variable global variables or shared variables uh, and we need to do that so that we don't have uh, we don't have more than one uh, thread reading trying to read to read or write at the same time to the same place uh, we need to be able to control that or we'll have a, we'll have a unpredictable results let's say uh, the next thing I have here I'm just creating one global variable it's going to be count called counter and each one of our threads is just going to increment that. That's what this program is going to do. It's going to be very simple, but just just to demonstrate how the threads work. Uh, next in the main function here, we have I'm creating uh, three integers, and those are just going to uh, hold the returned value uh, when we create each thread. Okay, and then we have to create this uh, p p thread type, uh, and I'm going to ha uh, ha create three of them. It's, it's going to be thread one, thread two, and thread three. Uh, so th and those are just like they sound. We're going to create three threads, and that's what they're called. All right. Okay, so ne now in this next section, let me scroll down here. It's a little slow with everything I have running. Uh, but uh, here we go. We're going to create each thread, um, and again, we're going to, going to have this uh, this value, the the return value stored in here, and then uh, when we when we create, so we're going to call this p thread underscore create. Uh, then we're going to pass the uh, the address of thread one uh, to this. Uh, we'll just use null here. Um, and this, these are used. You can pass. You can pass arguments to your to your thread if you like. But uh, we're not doing that in this case. Uh, and then, then this is the the function uh, that's called when the, the where the thread starts its execution. Um, okay. And and so we're going to do that three times. So do that for each one of the threads. And you see, each of the threads is calling the same function, but they're going to be executing. Uh, in parallel. All right. Uh, so we've, we've created three threads there. And uh, let's just jump down to this function. Okay, here's the, the function that we're going to, to execute each thread. Uh, you can see we have a very simple for loop here. We're going to increment or we're going to loop uh, 10 million times. Yep, that's 10 million. And we're going to lock our mutex, and this is how we lock the mutex, pthread underscore mutex lock, and then pass to it the mutex. Uh, then we're going to increment that counter, uh, and then we will unlock the mutex. Uh, so that's all this does. And then when it, when it completes that, uh, each thread will execute this line here, and it says counter value is, it'll give the value of the counter 
and it's going to get the the process ID of the current process. Now, as I said, uh, we could have multiple threads in the same process. You notice we didn't create a new process, so we would expect this to return the same value each time. Uh, but this counter value should be different because each one of the threads is going to increment this this counter 10 million times. So we should get different values there. Uh, next, let me jump back up here. Okay, after we created those threads, uh, we're then we're just going to print the process ID of the, the main process. Just you, you can see that it is the same as the threads. Um, and then down here, it's uh, very important to use this, uh, use these lines here. Uh, so you have uh, this p thread join, and we and you then you pass to it the thread the thread name. Uh, now, if you don't do this, it's possible that uh, your this, this main program will just go through and exit, and your threads won't finish. Uh, so you need to do this to uh, hold hold the progression of the program at this point until the threads are finished. Okay, so th it won't go past this point until the threads are finished. Once those threads are finished, then it'll proceed down to this line right here. Um, so, and then we're going to just from the main process again print print that process ID. Then we'll exit the program. So now watch my watch the uh, process monitor over here and let's just look at this one. See we're hovering. Okay, it jumped up at 12 because I clicked over there. Wow. Uh, there, there we're back down to 1%. Remember it was only went up to 25% when he did that the other test. Um, um, okay, let's uh, compile that and build it. I'm getting a warning down there, but it's uh, it's just yeah, it, it, it'll run. Don't worry about it. Um, there we go. So there we go. We got, look, 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 look. We have 70% uh, there, 80%. Uh, look at our P thread test, and you can see that it was, uh, we're using, it looks like about three quarters of our processing power. Uh, so we had three processes, and each process was operating. On on a core, or I'm sorry, I'm, I, I'm let me correct myself. We had one, we had three threads, and they were all executing in parallel, um, and so we were making use of three of the cores of the Raspberry Pi 2. And you can see uh, from the main uh, this. You know, remember this this line didn't get called until after the threads were created, uh, but in terms of of parallel processes. Uh, this uh, these threads started to count um, about the time this executed so th that's why we saw this pop up first because it was much quicker to print that than it was to count the 10 million uh, into each process and since each one of these threads was uh, incrementing that value in parallel you can see that the value that it put out was more than 10 million uh, so you can you can see that um, well, as expected, we counted, we incremented by 10 million three times, and our final value is 30 million. And you can see that the, the values in between are about what it took in, in, in processing power uh, it, it to get the next thread going. So one thread started counting. And then the next, and then it was it was counting up while the next thread is created and so on. Uh, but you can see that on each line, this it, it reports back the same process ID, and then we're back in the main function, and it prints the process ID right there after all the threads join. And so there you have it. Now uh, that's a very simple example. There's a lot more to it, uh, but. That is the, the basics of how to make use of the multiple cores on Raspberry Pi 2 or any really uh, a Linux operating system uh, in, uh, on any computer. Um, so that's about it. I hope you liked this video. Please subscribe, like it if you like it, and share it, please. And uh, we will talk again real soon. Thank you. Bye.